Progate Racing. Show us your tips. Cox Plate Preview Day. Uh, one of my favourite days racing of the year, following up uh, one of my fav day, favourite days at racing of the year last Saturday. So fantastic time to be a racing fan. A fantastic card at Mooney Valley. Not so sure about the Roundwick card, but we'll get to that later, uh, Beaver. But, uh, yeah, spring is in the air. It's good to be alive. Spring is in the air. Racing is good. And uh, life is good. So uh, can't complain. Hard to complain. So uh, before we get stuck into the preview, uh, good good fan of the show, good man Toby has written and just asked our thoughts on uh, Mask Crusader in the Everest, what we thought of the run and what we thought the future might hold for him. So any thoughts there, Beaver? Yeah, oh, look, mate, um, hard to miss the run. It was outstanding. Um, it was out the back. I think we talked about on the show, we were a bit concerned that it might have to give uh, the horses like Nature Strip too far a start. Um, it did. It wasn't much too far a start because uh, a couple more bounds and uh, Mars Crusader wins. Uh, it was just a fantastic run. Uh, it's a fantastic horse when the pace was on. Um, it certainly got closer and finished closer than probably what I thought it would. Um, it was it, it was an outstanding ride to weave through the field again. If it probably has to pull to the outside and fly home, um, maybe it doesn't get as close. Yeah. But I think, yeah, I think, look, the future's bright for, for Mars Crusader. It just seems to be going from strength to strength. Um yeah, maybe the 1300 or 1400 is a go for Mars yeah, Crusader. Yeah, I thought about that as well. Just think, I don't know what's left in the spring for, for say, a 1400 metre race, but um, it did bound in air too, we didn't mention, but at the start, bound in air, which possibly cost it the race, but hard not to miss the run. And uh, I'm just having a look now. Uh, I think, I I think, think the goes, thing about Mars Crus Crusader right. is. It, it has to sit out the back and it has to be ridden cold. I think if you tried to bustle it early, um, I, don't, I just don't think it can produce that powerful finish. So I think there is only one way to ride it. Uh, and with, that was it, the last two starts. And again, it, it's probably only been beaten a lick by the best sprinter um, in the world or is, is classed as the best sprinter in the world. So that's, uh, that's no mean feat. So. The future's bright. I think um, if it can come up like it has this prep into next preparation, then maybe the Everest next year um, is well within its reach. So it, uh, it's it been to 400 metres in the all-age stakes. It was about the length of them in the, the Coldy one. I think it's a better horse now. Uh, and I think it was a fast track. Absolutely. Uh, so any sting out's a, a plus. Uh, interesting. It could be interesting to see it up the straight, that slower pace if it does yep. go to – the what is it the pat the used to be the Patnik VSC Classic or whatever it is, uh, maybe especially looking at what's in going around the Melbourne Sprint on f tomorrow night, uh, it it'll eat up anything down in Melbourne. Uh, you know, it, I think it's a horse you can follow if it goes south. I think I'd pretty much tip it. But are they talking about taking Nature Strip to that race? I was going to say I was going to say unless Nature Strip's there, uh, you can back it away from Nature Strip um, pretty confidently. I think I don't know what's left in fourteen hundred meter land or sixteen hundred meter land down there now. Uh, I think it's all Phillies and Mare stuff for the Cup, uh, cup Week um, off the top of my head. Uh, I think it's a run on Sprinter, uh, essentially, though. I probably wouldn't be trying to go too far further, but I don't think a slow 1,400 would be in it. Look, my advice to Toby mouse. would be, follow if you it. like the horse, keep following it, keep backing it. You won't finish behind. I think so. Um, he probably summed it up quite well, Beaver. We don't need to spend too much yep. more on it. Let's get to Mooney Valley where, uh, thanks for the support, big shout out there. And, and anyone else that wants to write in and ask some questions, we can ponder a bit more closely uh, as time goes on. Uh, jump on, leave a comment on YouTube and the PRG, PRG boys will pass it on to us or uh, jump on our socials, uh, Twitter, Facebook and uh, everywhere like that. You can also find us on Spotify if you want to just listen in the car or walk in the dog like a few friends of the show do. But let's get to the Mooney Valley. Where it is Cox Plate Day, there, I don't think there's been as much rain as was predicted in either state. There's supposed to be some rain no. throughout the afternoon. Uh, the rail's in the true. I, I'm thinking, you know, 10 races in, they're going to be getting off the fence uh, after the Friday night. It is true both nights. I don't mind that. Uh, we have seen the outside give out when it's got really wet. We have seen the inside give out. So we'll wait and see. But I, I've treated it as run on by the end of the day. I don't know what your thoughts, uh, thoughts are there, Beaver. 
Yeah, I think that's probably about right. I think they'll probably get to the middle of the track and uh, swoop around the corner. Beautiful. Uh, shall we kick off? Well, we kick off with the two-year-olds, uh, uh, a lot unraced in English, Benner, over the 1,000. Uh, have you got anything from all these unraced types here? Uh, no, mate. I, I found it's really hard to line up a uh, really open affair. Um, pretty tough here. Um, yeah, no, I think nothing that really stood out, mate. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to really commit too much to this race and spend a great deal of time on it. Uh, Equivocal's jump out was quite good, uh, but the, yeah, this is, we'll, we'll know more after these races, especially down in Melbourne. Uh, with In regards to these two-year-olds going forward, it is sales restricted, so there's also, uh, I don't think, I think the early two-year-olds, gen, generally the Magic Millions horses tend to be a bit more forward, so uh, we'll see what this brings in terms of the future of the English race. Uh, race two is that we stay over the thousand with the open handicap for the sprinters. Uh, you want to lead us away here? Yeah, look, uh, good little race this one. I I kind of went looking for something away from Starry Legend, and I just kept coming back to it purely because I just think it gets the right run here. I think it from gate two it jumps straight on straight on the bunny here. I don't see too much challenging it. Um, to be brutally honest, in the lead and probably just gets away with just too many cheap sectionals. So I, I kind of, Ranting's a horse I think has got plenty of ability um, and certainly certainly goes well enough fresh, but uh, trialled well in excess funds. But I think Starry Legend just gets the right run here and over the 1,000 metres jumps to the front and I think it probably wins. Starry's also in Friday night in a three-year-old race as well over the 1,000. So oh, right. On. Keep an eye on that. I'm not sure. I haven't seen any updates where it's going. Uh, exciting, long, yeah, young horse. Uh, if we're talking swoopers, I like Dexalation's return in Adelaide, uh, chasing a fast one. I think he was here in all banter. Uh, but Honest Little Mare, and, or Ali Boom, I should say. Uh, Honest Little Mare and um, by Mare, I mean Gelding. Honest Old Gelding, uh, who, who will run well here. Ranting is talent horse I've always had an opinion of. And, and Star is, uh, you know, sort of the obvious in that it's going to be on pace. And uh, if that's how the Valley's playing, you know what you're going to get with it. So uh, hopefully the first two will give us a decent lead. Tend to find at the Valley, you can make a call early about Patton. You don't need to, by race three, you sort of know where the Patton is here. Uh, so we'll know after this. Uh, and can set up the rest of the day. 1,200 metre listed race for the Phillies is race three. Uh, where I liked the I liked the run of New York Baby uh, back to the scene of its uh, oh coming to the valley after chasing Sneaky or after getting run down by Sneaky Five who's in the market in the Manicado tomorrow night uh, was the best of the uh, ones close to the rail in that race and I think has Robidira covered and as a result has everything else in the race covered so I was quite happy to to be with the favourite here like the draw like Damien Oliver. Um, so I'll kick off the, you know, my betting on the program with New York Baby, I would suggest. Uh, what are you thinking? No, I'm going to flip it the other way. I'm going Robidira. I'm pretty keen on Robidira in this. I thought um, I thought it was absolutely given no chance last start. Um, it was jog trotting behind them and just couldn't get a run. If it gets a clear run, I'm pretty confident it would have finished pretty close to winning that race. Um I think it gets the right run here, but it's not going to get locked in. So I'm pretty confident James McDonald can give this a good run, and this will this will be right in the finish here. Uh, Four dollars, good price for me. Uh, one of the dangers, Star Waltz. Waltz. It wasn't. It didn't get much luck last start after coming off a good win. Um, I think it can run well. How big is the J Mac effect tomorrow? First time we see him down south, uh, and with some of their. There are other big hitter jockeys not there. Uh, is he a big on a big jockey change? I imagine all through the card for you. Oh, absolutely. Um, he's the best in the business, and yeah, he's always. You, you probably get a little bit shorter price because he's on him, but uh, there's a reason for that. Yeah, he does win a lot. Uh, race four is a twelve hundred meter red anchor uh, for the boys this time. Not the most inspiring. Race, but um, look, I was I was pretty impressed with what Dosh did actually in the Scalacci. I thought he was very brave on pace, uh, against the older horses. Comes back here, 
and I think it'll be hard to beat. I think gate eight can get right across. There's not a ton of pace inside and um, was was happy to be with him. What are you thinking? Yeah, I thought uh, Dosh is certainly going to be one of the hardest to beat, but I, I landed on Mornington Glory. I uh, really liked Mornington Glory's uh, first start when it won and then uh, it, was a, it was a big step up in grade last start. Um, and I didn't think it was was too bad a run. It went to, I think, what was it, a Group 2 race? And yeah, the Kalos race, yeah. Yeah, Kalos uh, General Bow yeah. race. Yep. Yep. Um, and I thought it was I thought it was pretty honest in that race uh, and ran well enough, and I think it can it'd be improved by that. It was only its second race start. Um, so I thought Mornington Glory provided good value. Cool. Yeah, you, uh, you were keen, quite keen on um, up the straight there, second up. Race five is the Phillies Classic over the mile, uh, another group two. You see a fair bit of this form come through the back from the Guineas 10 days ago. Uh, is that the way you're looking? Not quite, no. I've landed on Maracana. Okay. Uh, two starts, two wins. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it can win three out of three. Uh, it's drawn off the track, which probably means it has to go forward. Um, but it's wins that it's had um, are pretty good, and those, those winning races, uh, I think the form ties in nicely. Uh, with that, with with some of the other horses that it's beaten, uh, it's got uh, Brett Preble, Preble aboard, and uh, Brian's going good. So, uh, Maracana to continue on its winning ways and make it three from three. Uh, I don't like that it's favourite, and I think it's been overplayed because of the no luck. But uh, Harris, I thought was tracking into the Guineas very well before he or before she almost fell. Uh, gets a ten day back up here again drawn for the blending run and happy to, to look that way. I'm, I'm, I'm going away from the Vianello race, which was, we said before, and was pretty ordinary and we didn't learn a lot out of. Uh, Maricana, obviously lightly raced, uh, more upside than some of these. And I made a case last week for, I like big putts and it's still thirties. Just had no luck in its last start. And uh, I'll probably have a small bet on that just to, to save it. And the rest of them, I'm, I'm happy to play around. Sounds like your putting. Not much yes. luck. Exactly. Um, the Crystal Mile race six is next. Uh, we see the two uh, brown horses in the market here and Buffalo River going around once more. Uh, what are you thinking here for the, the the other feature on the card? Yeah, look, mate, I think Elephant's uh, a super bet in this. Um, it, from gate two, it's probably just going to sit on the back of Buffalo River. who will go forward. Um, and that'll give it the right track into the race here and just be able to roll out off the back of Buffalo River into the straight and uh, cross the line first. I thought, you know, it, its last start wasn't the worst run in the world. It was behind some pretty good horses in on Thunderstruck, Tafane and the likes, and prior to that, um, which is outstanding, this is a much weaker affair than probably nearly all the races it's been in uh, this preparation. So, uh, yeah, I'm pretty keen on Elephant. Yeah, I agree. I think it's going to sit right on Buffalo River's back. And uh, with even luck, pokes its head in front around the 200, just off the top of the bend there and races away and wins. Uh, flying his preps. Yeah, no luck last start. And uh, I'm just not sure Buffalo River runs a mile. I think it's a wet track for an 100-meter horse. And uh, we'll set it up nicely here. Uh, away from that, I don't think there's any, you know, the other best horse in the race, I think now is Romancer. And do I really want to back it? Not really. So happy to take the around $2.50, $3, 270 I should say, uh, elephant here. And I'm um, pretty keen. I uh, don't know if I've added much yet. I've seemed to have found a lot of favourites at the Valley. So give them strength. Yeah, look, I think, I think that's right. But I think, you know, there's some really nice bets there. Um, yeah. And it's hard to find anything you know, a lot of things outside of that. So uh, uh, sometimes you just got to go with what appears to be the obvious. Uh, in the crystal, uh, in the drum and golf vase over the, the uh, Cox Plate distance for the three-year-olds, is Forgot You the obvious? Absolutely. Um, it's a quality horse and they've got bigger plans for this. Uh, if you go back to the guineas, um, it had the fastest 200, I think, in the race, yeah. last 200. Uh, it finished off harder than Anima. 
Uh, so it appears to be looking for this distance. Uh, if it's going to win the, the derby, um, it need to be winning this. Yeah, don't have any dad. I think it's uh, one of the best bets on the card, one of the best bets around the country. I like the draw by this stage, as I mentioned. Um, it's probably we're looking down the outside. And its best runs have all been at the Valley. He's done some freaky stuff here, uh, as well as coming out of the hot guineas, who uh, spoilers I'll be mentioning when I get to my Cox Plate tips. And uh, easy bet to have, and looks like it's a, I probably should have taken the price this afternoon. Uh, but yeah, keen to back it. Uh, if little Akihiro turns up here under J-Mac, it, it fits in, I think, better than some of this other Melbourne form. And again, good luck to, uh, uh, to Carol and Jace. Um, got another one going around in their army. So, but I think forgot you will win this and probably start favourite in the derby. Yeah, I'm not sure it'll start favourite in the derby, but well, the thing on Wednesday was uh, not too bad. I can't remember its name now. Um, it isn't isn't Gunstock or whatever it is. Gunstock was good. Current favourite. And what one on what one on Geelong on Saturday in the classic on Wednesday, I should say. Ah, uh, not sure. Uh, anyway, look, yeah. while you do that, I'll... I uh, forgot, forgot to use 350 gun stock, $4. Yeah, uh, okay. Chutaka. Chutakaka. Chutakaka, $13, yeah. yeah. It'll get better as it gets further. I, uh, but I, I thought gun stock would be favourite. So, it might still be. We'll see, tomorrow will play a big part, and I don't know if we'll learn it because it should beat them, but anyway. Yes. Uh, race uh, probably, 8. Probably comes in. Yeah. Race eight, the uh, 2,500 metre Mooney Valley Gold Cup. You're giving another chance to floating artist? I'm actually going to go for Pondus. Just a okay. um, bit fresher, second up here. I think uh, 2,500 uh, definitely suits it. Uh, ran 2,500 last start. Uh, behind Grand Promenade and Charlie Rose. Charlie Rose come out and frank that form midweek. Um, I think Pondus will be further improved by that. They're obviously looking for a cup, cup start. Um, so I suspect it'll, they're expecting it to run well here. Floating Artist, I was just I was so disappointed with its it run last start. Just went too slow. Let the others chase it. It should have rolled along. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, but that's still, it just still concerns me um, here. And yeah, for that reason, I've just gone for Pondus. Um, yeah, what do you think? I, I'm, I'm forgiving Floating Artist. I think it, it should have rolled along. I think Pondus being here uh, and Ladonda V being here helps because it's going to put some pace into this race. And uh, if I'm, if my feeling's right, it'll be the best stayer and the, uh, the pace here will suit. Uh, we do though we do know though that Harpo marks will stay uh, coming off the Metro, and that potentially could be better form for this than the Melbourne stuff. So that'll be my main danger. Pondos will roll along on pace there and uh, is, is honest, but uh, hasn't won for a while. So I was forgiven floating artist, and I think it's a good chance to get that money back here. Uh, does the weather play a part by now? Not sure. I think it should be fine. Race nine, the uh, Cox Plate is the feature. Wait for a championship of Australia. Uh, cracking little field, very interesting field of 10. Uh, what are you thinking, Beaver? I'll leave, give you first crack here. Of course you will. Um, Take it if you want. Look, I, no, no, look. It's only a small field, 10 runners. Um, and I think you can narrow down the chances quite quickly. Uh, in, in this race. I think there's only three or four genuine chances here. Uh, I've settled on Zaki. I am going to forgive Zaki um, for its last run. I think that's why you're getting $3. I think if you, I think if Zaki won last start, you're probably getting $1.60. Um, so you're almost getting double the price, I think, based on the fact that, again, its race wasn't run to suit last start, and maybe that's a chink in the armour. Uh, maybe it was just a bit of an anomaly. Um, I'm banking on it being a bit of an anomaly. Um, its form prior to last start was way too good um, to rule out. Um, 
similarly, I think very elegant the main danger. Uh, it's a it's an outstanding horse. Again, something didn't seem to be a hundred percent right last starts. Hopefully, there's there's no ill effects from that, and that can, it can run the great race um, that we know it can. Um, Animo obviously you can't rule Animo out with the forty nine and a half kilos on its back. Uh, it's uh, done everything asked of it this preparation, last preparation, but it's up against some serious race horses here. Um, as a youngster, they youngsters can perform well in this race and gate 10, we know it'll run on. Um, and you can't rule out, if, you, if you're saying that, Captive on. Uh, I think Captive on with uh, same weight on its back and it was going almost as good as Animo on the line um, last start. It's going to get a good run uh, from gate one. Uh, when you're taking four dollars to nineteen dollars, that's not a bad price. Anima on top, and I'm keen. Uh, I haven't been this keen to back a horse since ooh, Nature Strip last week. I, I love the draw. I love the fact that Craig Williams doesn't have to think about it. He just pulls the outside, uh, coming through the fastest guineas. I think it's record time for the race. Um, he reeled them in. If there's any rain, he swims. His best performance was in the wet at when he bolted in the size at Randwick, and uh, I, I like the fact that all day I'm going to hear how he's got the job ahead of him from gate 10 and I'll just throw another 20 bucks every time I hear it on the day. Really keen to back it. Uh, I'm going to forgive if it's wet, I'm going to save on very elegant. If it's dry, I might save on probable. And I am going to have a place bet on captive aunt uh, for all the reasons you said. I think three odds can run place placings here and I, I can see it just from gate one. Yendo will, will figure his best chance is to roll straight to the front and try and get away with the... Uh, the no weight uh, scenario, and I think can hold on a run of place. Taking on Zaki, I've been wrong uh, very rarely, and um, yeah, keen to back Animo, keen to back the three-year-old here. I think it's a very good horse. Uh, so that's my feelings. And uh, and why you're taking on Zaki? Uh, I think it may have peaked a couple of runs early. Taking on the theory that which has been floated a bit that the short spell from Queensland tends to produce peak runs earlier in the prep. And I thought it was very flat. I didn't have an issue with the riding. I just thought it was a flat run last time. Jay Mack goes back on, you know, he is a freak and maybe it was just the, the run he had to have. Um, I'll be wrong, but uh, I would definitely be put in the quaddy, but just happy to bet around. I think it's a great betting chance. And maybe the last time we see Animo before it uh, goes off to stud. So, yeah, that was my thoughts here. Uh, I thought probably it was fantastic, but I've, I'm scared of rain. I thought probably it was really good last time. And that form held up all right uh, through non-conformist running well in the um, Thorpe Cup last week. So uh, if it is dry, I'll, I'll have a, a saver on it, If but I won't. We know if it's wet, we can avoid that. Uh, but they're my thoughts here. That's all. Not that much, Dad. Very good. Yeah. Seeing a chance to have a crack. Uh, race 10, is your battery all right there, Beaver? Yeah, it's all good, Matt. Testio Stakes is for the girls. Wraps us up at Mooney Valley, where if they're here, I'm keen to back the form out of the, the Sydney race, the angst. More profit down here, more profits if she's here and not in the uh, the invitation. Uh, was good chasing uh, Mirror Vision last start, and through the same race, Grace from Harmony was wide, and... Unlucky and hit the line well enough, but he's starting to test the friendship. But I'll, I'll back them both here. Uh, just on the, just taking the Sydney form to the mares here. Uh, what are you thinking to wrap us up? Yeah, I'm going Grace and Harmony third up. Yeah. Um, I, th I think this first two runs this prep have been really good. I think it gets the peak fitness now, and I think it gets out to the mile, which certainly suits. Uh, gate five, I think, uh, fair enough. And Wallace seems to produce these horses at the right time. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if there's not a race on Cup Day for it. So I think it'll run well here. Mm -hmm. uh, very good. I like it. Do you want the Cox Plate Quaddy? Totally up to you, mate. I'm easy. All right. All right. I'll take it. Go on. Unless you want to swap. Mate. Did we get it last week? No, no. I can't remember if we got it last week. I can't remember. Anyway. Um, First leg, uh, Mooney Valley. I'm going one out, forgot you. Mm -hmm. uh, number one, race seven, number one. The first leg. In the second leg, I'm going numbers. 
5, 7, 10, and 12. Sounds good to me. In the Cox plate, I'm going numbers 1, 6, 9, and 10. Beautiful. And to finish up the day, I'm going numbers three, four, six, nine, and 14. Cool. Uh, yeah, Illa Ferry was not a bad Australian debut, actually. Illa Far, the 13, but I'm happy with those numbers, Beaver. Good job. For progretracing.com.au, your best and value at Mooney Valley. My value comes up in race 10, number nine, Grace and Harmony. I think it's going to be really hard to beat. And my best bet comes up in race six, number five, Elephant. Lovely. Uh, I'm going to agree with you. My value is Grace and Harmony as well in the last, number nine. And why not? I'll make Animo the best. Let's get into it. Uh, Cox Plate three-year-old Animo, my best of the day down there. Uh, I think obviously forgot you will win too, but um, a good betting program at the Valley. I hope the, uh, there's no demons in the track and uh, it's a great hunting day. We head to Sydney for the Invitation and the Bondi, a couple other pop-up million dollar races here uh, where we haven't had any rain all week. It was supposed to bucket down from Tuesday. I haven't seen any of it yet. Uh, I believe there's a little bit coming through in the afternoon, but with the rail, I think the rail's in the eight metre mark and then eight metre to the thousand five, the remainder. If they haven't watered a week, let's just watch out for on pace um, mm. for the day. If they've been holding off watering, I haven't done that proper, my due diligence there. But uh, if they do get rain throughout the day, I don't think it's going to, like last week, it, it'll play okay. It'll be fine. So, yeah, just treating it. Be wary of on pace bias is all I'd suggest there. Uh, we kick off with the two-year-olds again over the 1,000. You got any thoughts here? Uh, yeah, I like contemporary. Uh, James Cummings horse here, uh, favourite. It was a good second um, at its only race start. So I think it'll be very much improved by that um, experience. That uh, that was, its only start was at Flemington down the straight yep. on a softish track. Uh, it was favourite in that race, had no cover, um, but just kept chasing hard over nine, 900. Um, and then won a really good trial uh, back at Warwick Farm about a week ago. Uh, that was impressive. I think this is, I think this is a good bet at three dollars fifty. Agree. Yeah, I've got it on top. Uh, and just the one at odds. I thought uh, Snit Cat just never really got a crack at him up the straight. Gets Jason Collard on now, and uh, I'm just back in the race form to uh, be prevalent as it tends to be in these early two year old races. Um, but happy to start the day with the Godolphin favourite there. Race two, the highway. Have you uh, have you dabbled? No, thank you. Into water here? I even had the alarm no, for you. Ah, oh. uh, I wasn't falling into that trick, mate. All right, we'll save that for another day. Uh, yeah. the, the, the I knew you'd be. I knew. <laughs> I knew you'd be waiting for me there, mate. And it ain't happening. All right, uh, I'll save that for another day. The Massar alarm. Uh, 1,200 metres, Brian Crowley over the 13, not 13, it's the time, 1340, uh, over the, uh, whatever bloody listed race it is, with some uh, some of these three-year-olds. Abel Willie, a nice enough debut. It's short now, actually. Um, at Kenzo, yeah. uh, I think it fits in really well here and probably goes on to win this. Main danger, the, the Wallace stable mate, Zarastro, who was good on debut against Paul Leal. And has trialed pretty well since. And I'd imagine if it's kicking off in a listed race, uh, Waller must have some opinion of it because he could have easily had a kill at Kenzo or somewhere and bought it here. So I think he's got the key to this. Uh, and there's not a lot away from this, I don't think. Uh, anything to add? No, I think you're right. I think uh, looks very hard to beat. As I reach with the fridge. Uh, race four then is the... Midway, benchmark 72. Uh, what are you thinking here? Yeah, I look, I left this one alone as well. Um, found this a really tricky race here. Um, 
So I didn't didn't have much to to go by. Uh, I I thought who I'm happy to back here at the price. Uh, Undeniable uh, is flying, obviously, and uh, Jerl, who had beat home at Rose Hill, has since come out and won well at back at midweek level. And Rath Valley Miss had to sit outside lead in at that round week. Kenzo meeting and uh, in a decent enough race, uh, although Liston Barn didn't exactly stamp the form there, and uh, is a 15 bucks. Happy to have a saver on that and see how it goes coming back in distance here for Greg Hickman. But uh, yeah, not a you know not a massive race for me either. Race five, the 1400 meter Falante Stakes, where we've got the the horse down from uh, up north, one you you're pretty fond of taking on some of these. What are you doing here? Yeah, it's a bit of a tricky race. I think the truck's going to play, could play a big part in this. I think if it is on pace and they're really suiting those up front, uh, Emerald Kingdom's going to be really hard to beat. It, look, I think I think it was a little bit butchered last start, to be honest. I, I tipped Apache Chase and Apache Chase just sat on its back and ran past to Emerald Kingdom and went yeah. way too hard uh, for a horse of Apache Chase's ability. Um, it's got it's carrying 60 here. It's going to need, you know, it's going to want the, the um bias uh for the on paces. Uh, that'll that would really help it. Korea Dearis is a really good horse, a really promising horse. It raced in some pretty good company races last start, but you know, it's going to get back in the field. Mm. Uh, that could help. Um, I didn't get a good look at its trials. No, that's fine. It, they were interesting. And the fact is, um, yeah, trialed a few times here. I, I'm not sure what's up with it, which is, uh, the thing is, you know what you get with Creedia it's going to be last and you can have your heart in your mouth if you're going to back it. Sorry, keep going. Yeah, the last the last trial, I think they just put it out the back and just left it out there, didn't they? Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, which they did all the way through. Um, so I don't know what what to make of that. So that's why it was a little bit of a, little bit of a question mark over it. But if you go back to some of its form last preparation um mm. it, it was pretty good uh, for a race like this it'll get back in the field but it's, it has got a pretty pretty good finish on it um uh, so uh, i've lent for korea dearest but uh probably changed my mind if the truck was playing uh, for on paces I've, I've just flipped around i've gone with emerald kingdom just for map pattern here i think it's going to roll along and these leaders cuba and quacker jack are are cooked they're going to sit in front and hopefully tim clark can pull out when he needs to and uh, and go past i thought he was uh the up-and-comer i don't understand the weights here but um he's the up-and-comer and can win this and uh, la i think star spangled banner can improve has had a couple of fitness runs and uh, and might step up here just taking uh if it's swoopers and wet then star Creedia spangled again. rodeo you mean yeah yeah the other horse not quite star spangled banner I was just about to cap. Can I get twenties for it? It's probably start. <laughs> probably starts favourite in this race, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Probably get get a money for it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah they're not giving twenties. Um, yeah, let's move on then from that uh, little snafu. Benchmark seventy eight is the mile race number six. Uh, whoa. What are you doing here? <laughs> I'm. I'm going to go for Shibley. Okay. I, I really liked the, the winner Shibley last start. Uh, finished on very nicely down the middle of the track. Uh, c- continues to improve every start this preparation. It's now, uh, what, this will be its fifth start this preparation. The mile really suits. Uh, drawn well in gate five to get a nice cosy run from Tommy Berry. And uh, again, can uh, blow past them in the last 200. Yeah, is Tommy Berry the the go-to jockey tomorrow with the three big ones all down. Looks like it. Down south, Looks yeah. like it, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, look, I, I've gone Mar and Par. It, it, how, how do you line up all these Walla ones? Um, but progressive and has been winning with a bit in hand all the way through this prep. I think rolls forward and sits close enough to on pace here and uh, might have something might have something small and Lady loves a gamble um, off the at the 30s just because it's honest to be on pace in a race I don't particularly like. Uh, obviously, Shibley, Dancing Gidget, going my early quaddy for those taking notes. The 2,400-metre Tattersall City Cup is race number seven. Zarek, 
Sure, Paris favourite here off the time off. What are you? What are you thinking? Yeah, it's a pretty ordinary race. Um, there's some real tries in this that haven't won in a fair amount of time, to be honest. Um, it's for that reason I've just come back to Zarek just purely on the basis that it appears to be. Um, the horse with the most amount of potential in this race and its runs over this sort of distance have been pretty good. It was uh, less than two lengths behind Montefilia and on Tonte last start. Um, that, that's an outstanding run for this quality field. Prior to that, similar distance, uh, She's Adil and Montefilia. And prior to that, over as a more unsuitable sort of 1500 was behind Soldier of Love that I think it had a nice win on the weekend. Um, so if you if you go back through its form, um, it's pretty good for a race like this. Fourth up, I think that's uh, now gets to the right point in its preparation to sh- probably put its best foot forward, 2,400 suits. Uh, and again, Tommy Berry's on board. So you wouldn't want it any skinnier in the market. At, that's mm. still a lot of 50 mark, but... Uh, the reason is, is there's not a lot of horse in the race. Starting to feel like master of wind to me, Zarek. Uh, I'm keeps getting back though, but uh, I went looking for the horses on the quick backup here. Savvy Valentino, third run in ten days. Uh, it's going to turn up here and be fit and ready for the twenty four hundred. And Torrens backing up from last week, and Hush Rider, who will push forward and might give him something to chase again. Uh, all on the quick backup and just looking for a different angle because I, I don't want to touch $2.40 Zarek. Uh, it might be heavily backed. I can see it being one of those ones that ends up being back to $1.60 and wins and I'll just get annoyed about it. But uh, um, happy to play away from it just uh, because I can. <laughs> um, uh, for better or worse, race number eight is the 1600 metre Bondi Stakes where we see the lead up come through. Uh, the 1,500-metre, whatever it was called, race two weeks back where Hilal won. Uh, what are you thinking here? Well, um, kind of, if you look if you look through the look, this form, you kind of, if you go away from the top two, you, you kind of drop. You just, it's really hard to find anything. You just keep going and, like, coming back to the top two, though, a pretty impressive last start. I thought. I thought they they both showed that they got a bit of potential and a bit of quality. And uh, I just couldn't find anything outside the top two. And I just thought Halal's win last start was a little bit stronger than Coast Watch. I thought Coast Watch had every chance, and Halal went past it. Um, out to sixteen hundred here, uh, drawn the six. I think Halal's got the better draw here. Uh, so I've stuck with Halal to probably beat Coast Watch. Same. Yeah, Halal, uh, I think Stan Fox is the right form. And uh, Halal was pretty strong through the line. It's best, probably its best run to date was the second in uh, Champagne over the mile at Randwick last prep. Uh, so I think uh, it's it looks obvious to me here. If you had to find one away from those two, I think Dufrance is the one just because it's going to lead yeah. with Josh Parr and give you a sight. Uh, I thought the same thing. So if you if you really want one for your trifectas, it'll be number seven difference. But one from two, uh, I haven't added a lot here to that one. The invitation, what's it worth? Two million something? Yeah, two million dollars. Four hundred meter race for the mares. Where? Well, firstly, how far would probably have won this race by? Yeah, probably uh, a bit. Probably, yeah, yeah, a fair way. Uh, but in fairness, she's off to a cox plate, and the bloke that's got the favourite. Uh, bloke that trains her trains a favourite here, so he might have a good day. Uh, the favourite I speak of is in, in Trivier, and I think it's probably a moral. It's a good day for Tommy. Me Bear. too. He might pick up. Yeah. He's, he's going to pick up half a mil tomorrow. Poor Tommy. Um, what's going to beat it? It's just He's just going to find somewhere in the running line. He's going to pull out and probably win this race, as far as probably or might have, because uh, all the old ones are going no good. And... Uh, Jury's out on the Phillies this year with Star Tontes uh, and more profits. So, yeah, easy for me to back on Trevier. Uh, I think it's a good thing. And uh, do you have anything to add? Ah, look, I, I agree with you on Trevier. It, 
uh, three dollars. I think that's outstanding price. Mm -hmm. uh, it was it was outstanding first up. Uh, last start was given no chance. Got way out of its ground in a on a track that you just couldn't come from back in the field. Uh, but was still pretty honest as they come. I think by this time of the day, where it's drawn, it's not going to hurt. And it's yeah, ice bath is just not going good. And Star Tontes. Uh, while it's while it's been in good form and last start was was reasonable enough, it's not as not to the quality of on Trivier and uh, yeah, you're probably you know a horse like Nudge is probably one of the main dangers. Yeah, at least Nudge is on the yeah is fresh here, uh, so is, yeah, I think you're, you're probably right. Actually, it might be the main danger drawn just inside it, uh, but yeah, good betting race set for me at least and for you. It sounds like. Um, Race 10 is the benchmark 88 to wrap us up where, well, what do you do if Gravina from gate one? Is that an issue for you? Uh, it's a slight issue, but uh, it's probably the second best bet on the day. Um, there's some there's some good bets. There's three or four really good bets here at uh, Warwick Farm as well. And this is one of them. It was, you know, got beat by Big Parade last start and come out and frank that form. And um, it's, it probably should have finish closer, to be honest. Um, it's got a really powerful sprint and a great turn of foot. I think if it can just get off the fence somehow oh, in the running line, um, it'll get the split and beat these. Yeah. Yeah. Look, I, I don't like gate one. It, it leaves a bit bit, bit uh, uncomfortable, but I think it's it's the form horse here. Uh, and I think you might, you may have, depending on how the track's playing. Look, if Karen can get it sitting either leaders back or a pair back and he gets some luck, it might not be a problem, but I don't think, I think it's going to matter. Yeah. As long as he gets even luck, he should, he should be in a finish. Uh, the ones away from it, Kinlock just um, caught wide and had a lot too much to do first up. Uh, and, uh, you know, Bellucci babes honest and run well, but uh, that's about it for me. And we will wrap up our thoughts for progretracing.com.au. With first of all a Sydney Quaddy, I better do that and make sure uh, everyone's got the pen out for this. Where I'll throw Zayrak in uh, just for you, Beaver. Three, four, eight, and nine. First leg. Second leg, one, two, and seven. Third leg, two, six, and thirteen. And we'll come home with six, nine, 11, and 13 for the quaddy. Uh, for progetracing.com.au, check out their free tips and extensive guides. Your best and value at Randwick. Yeah, my best bet comes up in race nine, number six on Trivia. Uh, I think it'll be super hard to beat. And my value bet is race six, number six, Shipley. Very good. Uh, around uh, $6.50, Mark. Yes. Uh, my best is on Trevier as well. Uh, she's there to win. And my value, I'll make Savvy Valentino in the staying race. Uh, as she just gets a saddle on as she does every second day for Bjorn. So we've got the Group 1 Manicado at Mooney Valley tomorrow night. We'll see how the track sets up for that, uh, where it's a very ordinary Group 1 sprint. I think Savvy Toxel off the first up win will uh, run well again and, and is good, easy enough to back. Uh, you can forgive ingratiating that race to sort of too bad to be true up the straight last start uh, and can uh, with even luck can be in the finish there. Uh, but, and we see Lombardo in that race, Bieber, who's a horse you, you got a feel for, but I think Savatoxel's the, the quality sprinter of the field and um, hard to beat. Anything for us at Queensland? Um, just tomorrow night at the Mini Valley. Uh, mm. I think in race six, number two, the Gouch. I think it's going to be super hard to beat. Yep. Um, it's a horse that I like. So, uh, uh, keep your eye out for that. Um, and on Saturday up in Queensland, let me just flip to my form. Can't let the punters down. I do have a couple of bets up there. Um, where does my first one come up to? Some of the early races I was happy to let go up in, up in Brizzy. Um, sort of more looking towards the middle of the the races 
race five, number one, Tiger Heart. Uh, good first up run. I think it can run well and get us off to a winning bet. Um, and then my other ones came up really much later in the day. Thought around the $6 mark in race eight, number seven, Dominarcha. Uh, mm-hmm. Third up will be hard to beat. Um, in race nine, number 12, Neutron. Uh, tipped at last start, I'm going to stick with Neutron. And in the last, uh, another one that I've been backing is race 10, number two, Contemptuous. Very good. So it has been Show Us Your Tips. Uh, as I said, if you've enjoyed the show, give us a bit of feedback. Let us know how you go. Uh, give us a subscribe. Thanks to the, everyone who's jumped aboard the last few months. You can also, as I've said, find us on Spotify, anywhere good podcasts are found, iTunes, TuneIn Radio, Amazon, all that sort of thing. Uh, good luck, punters. Enjoy Cox Plate weekend, and we will talk to everyone Tuesday night for our midweek preview. I'll catch you soon, Beaver, and uh, we'll talk soon. Look forward to it. And I'll press this button here.